This is the Shroff Boss Podcast, a show that helps parents of kids with scoliosis find clarity in their path navigating the scoliosis journey. You are about to be spoiled. Dr. Katie Blanchard, Shroff Method physical therapist and coach, brings together physical therapists, spine surgeons, and parents to share and discuss tips and tricks for managing scoliosis. Scoliosis is not easy, but don't worry, we've got your back. Katie Blanchard, Shroff Method Physical Therapist here. Welcome to another episode of the Shroff Boss Podcast. Today I have with me Karina Feck. She is the owner and founder of Scolio Pilates. And so I'm very excited to have her to um, explain a little bit about what she does and how she helps people with scoliosis. So welcome, Karina. Thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, um, I'm excited to have you. Um, I'm a Shroff PT and I have taken some Scolio Pilates coursework. And so that's how I was introduced to Scolio Pilates. And I really kind of respect it. And I really fell in love with how you teach um, practitioners to treat scoliosis. So um, how about you tell us a little bit about your business and your mission with Scolio Pilates? Uh, So that's a great question, the mission. Uh, The mission from the beginning has been to add a fourth arm to the treatment of scoliosis. And so traditionally, the treatment of scoliosis is through observation, see if it gets any worse, bracing, and for surgery for uh, about 2% of all patients with scoliosis. Um, Scoliopilates was created as a way... um, to first of all help myself with my own scoliosis. There were not a lot of Shroff PTs in the country when I started in the United States, when I first started this work and I wasn't going to be driving, you know, six hours to the nearest uh, therapist. It just wasn't reasonable um, as many people know Mm -hmm. uh, and have experienced with their own scoliosis. So it was started as that, as first of all, as a way to help myself Um, And then when it worked so incredibly well, my pain levels dropped so dramatically, I thought that it must certainly be a coincidence. Um, It couldn't have possibly been that I've been living for so long with such chronic pain that all of a sudden I was like pain free. And so I spent hours and hours, I spent years um, volunteering my time in order to add this fourth arm of treatment, which is the exercise component. Because while we know that scoliosis specific exercise can certainly reduce curve, um, for most of us, what we're really looking for is can we just live our lives? Can we have a day where we get to decide what we're gonna do and not our, not our pain levels? Sure. Yeah, there's definitely a functional component of it. You know, Um, the goal of treating scoliosis is not, you know, you feel good within the session. You know, you feel good when you do these certain corrections or movements. It's we want you to live your life more pain free and be able to do the things that you love to do. Um, Well, and that you were meant to do. Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like your podcast. I mean, there's certain things that um, are our mentality, our makeup, our social network, you know, we are meant to do certain things. And if you have had even one day of pain that has prohibited you from doing something, then you know very well that you weren't doing what you were meant to do that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, So talking a little bit about Scolio Pilates more, what is the main concepts of scolio pilates just for our audience so mostly we're talking here to parents of kids who have scoliosis who are looking for answers um or young adults or even adults who have scoliosis themselves and you know are looking for treatment options yeah so there's four primary components of scolio pilates and the first would be simply to elongate you know just to kind of remind your spine that it has a lot of freedom in this upward motion Um, I certainly spend a lot of time sitting in my curb. I've probably been doing that since we started talking, but, you know, so that elongation and and nothing like, you know, grab your hair and pull it to the sky, but more like there's a little bit of bubble action there. The vertebrae, instead of imagining them as blocks, we think of them as balls and they, they kind of wind their way up. And that way there's already from the beginning a freedom of movement and not a, a stricture or a, 
or restriction around the movement. And then after that, we add the breathing component because even if you don't have scoliosis and you glide your ribs as far as you can in one direction and then just try to breathe, you know that there's restriction there. You know that if you have spent any time on social media, which of course none of us ever do, <laughs> <Of course> uh, <laughs> that we actually hold our breath when we're on social media uh, because we're bent over. And then when we're done with our typing or scrolling, then we'll sit up and take a breath and we live through this paradigm day after day. So anyway, elongation, lots of movement, less restriction. And then in that position, we breathe. And then you actually have the opportunity for both lungs to move more equally. Whereas if you're sitting in your curve or you're sitting on social media, the lungs only have the option to, to breathe here. And so then every breath reconfirms that, that shape, of course. And so da, 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 elongation, we breathe. And then the third component is strengthening and coordination. Like how do we throw a ball in this position? Um, and that strengthening includes, um, actually missed a step. So the strengthening includes the component of the corrections. So corrections come before strengthening. So if we're able to get elongated and we breathe and can we de-rotate the spine? Can we ask the spine, the part that lives behind us, can we ask it to breathe forward and move forward? Can we ask it to, uh, to side shift and to lift? Just small little things that should feel easy and with freedom of movement, as opposed to, you know, rah, and, rah. <laughs> and then strengthening and coordination, which is again, you know, can you move something in your hands? Can you throw a ball against a wall? Can you stand on one foot? So all of these things towards um, an alignment that may move the spine no more than a millimeter at times. It may move it a centimeter, but that is like a golden box of like <laughs> where things get released, you know, the side of the neck that's been super cranky, that spot under the shoulder blade that's like, rah, rah. and all of these things that just want to hold on, get the opportunity to be like, to be free. They're like, Ooh, I get to let go. I don't have to hold on for dear life. Uh, 24 seven. Yeah. It's a really, so those four things, elongation, breathing, correction, strengthening. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So it's a lot of components going into one, but all um, individualized for each specific person and client that you see, you know, it's not a, a one-stop shop of like, if you have scoliosis, this is what you do. Um, Wouldn't that be awesome? <laughs> yeah. It would be easy that way if it was. I wish it was that way. Um, that would be awesome if it was that easy, because then there would be one book or one page. <laughs> it would be so nice. And I think that for me as a professional, for you, Katie, um, that's what draws us to the work is the, is the individuality that, um, solo component that experiment of one and and let's work with you and see what what's going to um, work in your body it's not yeah. it's not like anything else for sure yeah every spine is different there's not one spine that's exactly like the next no, um sure. and something that i picked up from taking one of your courses is you like to refer to the spine as a beautiful spine Yes. Uh, and sometimes people with scoliosis you know they refer to themselves as broken or bent or their spine is not right, it's wrong. Um, so it's refreshing to think about the spine with scoliosis as being beautiful and we need to treat it that way. And so- I, Yeah, yeah. I remember being interviewed um, by NBC down in North Carolina years ago and they asked me, what is scoliosis? And, and the definition of scoliosis is a deformity of the spine. And so I said, well, scoliosis is a deformity of the spine, but I am not deformed. <laughs> I don't think of myself that way. Um, and my background before Pilates, Scolio Pilates, um, was dancing and art. And so as a dancer first, before I studied art, when you have scoliosis, you get to do things better than anybody else. Like we're <laughs> really good at this. 
<laughs> you know, we're really good at like just dropping into those curves and moving through that spine and, and actually supermodels. Do you have any idea how many supermodels have scoliosis? Because they can sit in that curve all day long. <laughs> and so you have these beautiful women, women that our society has chosen to put at the top of the beauty scale, and they have scoliosis. There's Victoria's Secret models with scoliosis. I can't tell you, like 30%, I think is the last study, of all professional dancers have scoliosis. These are women who are at the top of like, this is what we want to look like type thing. And, and I don't, I personally don't agree with that. Uh, I think that you should look like the healthiest version of you. And that is what's so incredibly attractive. And then if we move into the art portion of it, straight lines in art are not considered, you know, the most interesting generally there's lots of artists who would disagree with that but you see lots of folds and bends and movement you think about the work of vincent van gogh and there was so much movement in his work and so much non-linear um such a non-linear approach so yes i absolutely find the scoliosis spine to be just stunningly beautiful and i do recognize that it comes with uh, its own challenges for being that beautiful I do recognize that. Yeah, that's a great way of thinking about it. And that's, you know, how I would like some of our listeners to start thinking about their own bodies yeah. and their own spine as well. Um, so that's really great. Um, so we have all these concepts of scolio Pilates. Um, do you use this concept with kids as well? Um, oh, sure. Are parents out there who are searching for somebody in their area who treats scoliosis, maybe they don't have access to a Schroth method PT. Um, yeah. and they're searching for their child. So how can this help yeah. kids specifically? So with our children, um, we focus on talking to the child themselves. I know that the parent has emailed us and we, maybe we even had a phone conversation, which is not all these days. But, um, you know, when the child comes in, it's all about the child. We speak to the child why are you here? Is it only because your parents brought you or do you have any interest in this whatsoever? And then we try to find that, like, is there anything for you in this? And then we grab onto that component and say, okay, we want to help you do that. Because for the child, it might be, I'm totally here for my parents. And then you have to take a step back and say, okay, if you're only here for your parents, why do you think your parents brought you? Is there any value? We have to pull that out. Otherwise it's useless. They're not gonna do the work. They don't wanna come. They're gonna argue. It, it is for them. And so we have to make it about them. And then once we get started with the movement, we also want to apply the movement to what it is that they love in life. I had a little actress here. Uh, she was 12 years old and um, and so for the breathing component, um, once we got into alignment, once we got into like one or two little corrections, uh, we had, I had her uh, take a little inhale. And then as she exhaled, she was saying the line that she was going to have to say on stage um, in a short period of time. And so the first time she said it, it was kind of like this loud and it wasn't very it was a very short line, but as she became more comfortable with me, she stood taller, she held her corrections better, and she said the line louder and longer. So she chose a larger chunk of her line. Well, there's no better way to exhale than to talk, <laughs> right? So just get the child to talk. You don't have to say exhale. You can just talk. And she did. And, and it's since then, it's been a wonderful way to weave in what she loves to do, study her lines and perfect her art, along with um, the, the Scolio Pilates work that's really great for her spine. Now, you might have someone who's a football player, a soccer player, a dancer. And so you just weave this in. And that is how we focus primarily on our children. Now, our adults might be the same thing. It's not like you change interests as you get older. Oh. Um, but you also want to work within their passions. If they're gardeners, you know, they might plant a plant and then in between use the shovel or the pitchfork to elongate 
before walking across the yard. Because that is really one of the hardest things as we age. Our muscles really want to support that position, whatever it is. Right. <laughs> Good or bad, right? It's going to be like, Arr! love that. And then as you get up to move, you're going to just need a moment. <laughs> I think many of us are familiar with the moment of um, needing to reset before walking. Gotcha. Yeah. So applying um, all of this that you're teaching to what motivates whoever you are training, whether that be a child, an adult. Um, and that's really, really important because it is a lot of work to incorporate, you know, all of this. There's a lot of learning that goes on in understanding your curve and applying corrections, breathing, elongation, all of that. Um, so the person, you know, undergoing this treatment for their scoliosis really has to be invested. So you do have to tap yeah. into, you know, what will motivate them, what will make a difference in their life with their scoliosis as well. Yeah. Awesome. And a lot of times, as you know, Katie, a lot of times it's um, the motivation is pain. You know, if I do this, I don't have any pain. Um, and that's obviously and rightly so a huge, huge motivator. Oh, for sure. Yes, for sure. Um, and so you have scoliosis yourself. Um, can you give us maybe two or three things that you've learned along your own scoliosis journey? Um, you know, maybe you learned it the easy way, maybe you learned it the hard way. Um, but something that you can share with our listeners that you've learned having scoliosis yourself. Yeah, I think that um, some of the things I learned in retrospect. Uh, so one of the, I was a professional dancer. And if you are a professional athlete or an amateur athlete or I mean, just somebody who likes to walk across the floor, <laughs> there can be a feeling that sometimes like the movement falls out from, from below you. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be as easy or, or, or not easy. It could be something as like the feeling of like your knee or your hip giving out. Um, if you're dancing, it could feel like you jump and the jump doesn't land, it like implodes on itself. It could feel as an athlete, like my husband has a cold. Sorry, I don't know if you could hear that in the back. No worries. <laughs> He's really loud. Um, and so there's a feeling that the movement doesn't have the stability that you want it to have. And in retrospect, I know that was the scoliosis. And I wish I had known that then. I wish, because I would have been so much more forgiving because my movement would just all of a sudden fall out from under me, not predictably. Mm -hmm. um, but if I had known that my hips like to live, you know, over there on the left side of the universe, and then I wouldn't have spent all this time doing extra leg lifts. I would have been like, oh, I can just realign. Oh, when I, when the movement imploded, it wasn't my fault necessarily. It was where that hip was and I can easily get a handle on that. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing I learned, Katie, was most likely um, just revisiting the alignment several times a day, how helpful it is, the corrective alignment, 30, 40 times a day, not for an hour each time, there's not enough time in the day, but just even sitting here with you, I was digging up my mom's garden yesterday. And so just giving that example of elongation, starts to unwind things. So when you look at a spine, uh, I use this visual in my own head all the time. When you look at a spine, you see all these nibs and knobs sticking out, right? It's not like a smooth cylinder. And so what it feels to me, like sometimes it feels like something just kind of winds itself up around here. And that when I elongate, it releases. Um, that's the visual I carry. <laughs> That's exactly what it feels like. Yeah, very helpful. So, yeah, so just elongating and visiting the corrections. I know that's not the three or four bits that I've learned, but I think those are two really strong bits. You know, like when the movement falls apart on you, it's like, find, you know, think about where your body was in space. And if you could change that even a smidge, maybe you wouldn't fall out of whatever that movement is you're trying to do. And then the other one is revisiting the corrections, you know, 30 times a day, even if that just means elongating mm -hmm. um, with a little wiggle. Yeah, really, really great advice there. And obviously coming from, you know, going through that yourself and, you know, having to find these things on your own to solve your own issues with pain and things like that. Yeah. 
Um, really awesome. So Karina, um, I know I have experience with scolioplatis. I really love it. Um, I'm a Shroth PT and there seems to be a little bit of a divide of, you know, sometimes people wouldn't want to refer to a scolioplatis practitioner being a Shroth based therapist. I totally disagree with that. I have a huge abundance mindset of there's all these people out there who have scoliosis, their children have scoliosis. And if you have the tools to be able to help them, let's help them a hundred percent. Um, so I have a lot of people who are constantly searching for Shroff. There's nobody in their area, but maybe there is somebody who is scolioplatis trained, um, a trained practitioner. Um, and so how can somebody find either you to connect or someone who is trained in scolioplatis? Yeah. So the, the website is scolioplatis.com. Um, and we do have 70 practitioners worldwide. Now 70 is not a lot, but you know, it, like you said, it adds to the soup, it adds to the mix. Um, we only take uh, very few people on into the, the most advanced level of training. So maybe someday we'll have a few thousand, but right now, you know, we're still, it's very much about selecting who goes on to that level. Because as you know, this is not, this is not easy work. You do have to sleuth through uh, to help the person in front of you with the best options. Uh, I, I think that the divide between, you know, it's interesting, so many different uh, professions have the same issue, Katie, don't they? Where it's like, this is our profession. And then within that profession, there might be five or six schools. And within that five or six schools, there's this going on. Um, I don't feel that ever when I have a Shroth PT like yourself come to my class. I never feel like they're kind of sitting back and like waiting for me to like make a mistake. Which is great. Yeah. <laughs> it's never, ever happened. It's, it's everybody who has come, who has registered is all, they've all been like very, very interested. Um, we get asked to teach the work in hospitals, um, uh, children's hospitals. And some of those PTs are also Shroth trained and they, you can say, well, they came to take your class. Of course, they're going to be interested, but but even when we go into hospitals where they were kind of being like force fed the information because their director said, you're going to learn Shroff and you're going to learn this. We find the same thing. You know, people are interested in helping their patient. If there's a tool that helps them do that, then, you know, they're, they're interested. Um, if you offer um, some instruction that doesn't sound like anything that they know or are familiar with, then for me, it's simply a matter of opening a conversation. Once we open the conversation, then everybody can come together. But if you say, no, it's this way with no conversation, then you're going to have five or six schools go their five or six ways. But if the conversation stays open, then we all expand together to help patient. None of us is going to live forever. We need to send this to the next generation with as much information as we can possibly share yeah. and not keep it in a cubby hole tucked in somewhere. Yeah, it's all about sharing and collaborating so that we have, you know, the most knowledge and the best tools to help, you know, whoever may come in front of us with scoliosis. So exactly. I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, so people can go to your website, they can find a directory of someone who might be in their area yeah. and from there. Awesome. Yes, exactly. Um, so one final question for you here, Karina. Um, I've asked you a lot of different questions, but if there's something that I didn't ask you that you would like to share, um, something that you wish I would have asked, how would you have, you know, answered that question? Um, I would say don't, uh, and this is for the patient with scoliosis, um, don't limit yourself for sure. Um, set your goal. And if there's something, I mean, we can't be ridiculous about it. Right. But, um, if, if there's something you love to do, find a way to make it happen. Um, yeah. And, and maybe it starts off in a really small way. Maybe your goal is like, you know, my friends are, you know, off paddle boarding on Saturdays and this is never going to happen for me. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe it will, you know, find out what it is 
that your body needs to paddle. Work with someone like Katie, like myself, who can start to get your body used to the sensation of being on a paddleboard that's not stable. There's so many ways to prepare yourself. And on top of that, you know, let's say you're someone who is unable to build strength because some of us aren't, right? And so you want to go paddle boarding, but you know that today you don't have the strength to do that in your upper body. And maybe you're the type of person who is unable to build strength. Um, what's wrong with going out and sitting on a paddle board? What's wrong with finding someone who can, you know, pull the paddle board a bit for you? And you can provide 20% of the work instead of 100% of the work. There's so many ways to do one thing. And I just really, really want to encourage you, whether it's scoliosis or, or whatever it is, is to find a way to, make, to, to do something that's going to make your heart sing. Because if you feel like you're singing from the inside, then you're getting closer and closer to what it is that you're meant to do. Um, in your short time on this earth, you know, it's pretty short. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's probably my only thing to add. Yeah, wonderful. So don't limit yourself. Um, so Karina, thank you so much for sharing all these pearls of wisdom, all this advice. Um, thank clearly you. You're doing something really great with Scolio Pilates. Um, so if you want to connect with Karina, go ahead, go to her website, connect with her. I know you're on Instagram. Um, you can find her there. So thank you so much, Karina. And thank you, Katie. You're welcome. We will see you Take all. Take good care. Next episode. Thanks for listening to the Schroth Boss Podcast. Want more info on scoliosis and the Schroth Method? Join our free Facebook group or connect with us at schrothboss.com. See you at the next episode.